Hello and welcome to this mid-morning taste challenge. We have two rye whiskeys, Kentucky straight rye whiskeys, both from Bean Suntory. All right, so these are from James B. Beam Distilling Company. This is Jim Beam Rye, pre-prohibition style, introduced in 2015. It replaced an old yellow label one called Jim Beam Rye Whiskey which I've never seen in any store, but I wouldn't be totally shocked to run across it. So Jim Beam Rye. Got this for $17.49 at Total Wine and More in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Don't see it around much, but it is in production. <sighs> 90 proof. I don't know what makes it pre-prohibition style. New charred white oak barrels. That's the law. 90 proof. That's a traditional proof level. Dry spice rye with a long, soft finish, making this classic of all American spirit. The perfect choice for any whiskey cocktail. All right. <clears throat> Here is the competitor. America's original rye whiskey. Old overhaul. <clears throat> But this particular version was only introduced in 2022. I think I put 23 on the notes. I'll fix that in a moment. Old Overholt. Non-chill filtered, 86 proof, age four years, as it says right there. No age statement here, which means it has to be at least four years old. That's the law. That's the law. All right. Price. Uh, yeah, it was $19.99 for the old Overholt. So I actually paid a dollar fifty less for the Jim Beam twenty twenty two, not twenty three. Although I don't think most people got it till twenty three, but it was a it was at least technically on the market. Morning, who's man on the bottle of Old Overholt? Yeah, that's the guy that founded the company, Abraham Overholt. And then, uh, well, you know how it goes. They got bought out. <laughs> and now the distillery is abandoned. And there's a YouTube, or there was a YouTube video. I don't know if they deleted it. But there was a YouTube video of these people wandering around the distillery. They still had paperwork in the drawers. Even had grain. I don't know how the rats didn't eat it all, but they had grain. Bags of grain just left there. It was amazing. And, um. Uh, a hole in the floor where something collapsed, like the foundation collapsed or something. I don't know. I think that thing closed like in, I think it was like 93 or something, 30 years ago. They they got bought out by Jim Beam and they just left it. <laughs> you know, I don't know who owns it, who owns the land. They would kind of be liable for injuries, wouldn't they? But I don't know the law. I'm not a lawyer. Although I think I watched one episode of Perry Mason once. Okay, uh, Clancy. Hello, Clancy. Oh, I didn't know you were back in Louisiana. I thought you were still over in Spain. No, I uh, I just recorded all that while I was there on the trip, and then I start posting it when I got back. I don't like to make a big announcement. Hey, everybody, I'm not going to be home for, you know, days and days. My house will be, uh, you know, no one there. You know, it's kind of stupid, but people do that. Half the people you know on Facebook, you don't really even know who they are. So the appearance, the uh, old overhaul, I mean, the uh, Jim Beam is a little darker. A little darker. Now, what is the rye percentage of these? We don't know. They don't say. Okay, we don't know and they don't say. Now, I... I keep asking, and I think they're getting offended, you know, but I'm not trying to offend them. I keep asking people that do video reviews for a whiskey. I say, how do you know that's the Sazerac Mashville number one or number two? How do you know this? Uh, well, uh, they say, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, they uh, talk about it. I, I looked all over Sazerac's websites, up, down, front, back, side to side, diagonal. They don't say anything about mash bills anywhere on there. Nowhere. All right. 
and they just hear somebody say it, so they repeat it, <laughs> okay? And that's all I've noticed. They'll say, well, ancient age got the same mash bill as Blanton's. And how do you know this? Oh, um, I heard it from a friend who uh, heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend. Uh-huh. That's not a source, okay? I, I have good information on these two whiskeys because I put the links below from the company's website. That's a primary source from the company itself. It's not what somebody's saying about Jim Beam, James B. Beam Distilling Company. It's what they're saying about themselves, okay? I will say, Clint, <laughs> Clancy says, I will say that some of those Spanish beers actually look pretty interesting. If I could find them here, I wouldn't mind trying some of them. They were very interesting. We get Estrella, Estrella La Galicia here. I don't know where you're going to find it, but Estrella La Galicia. We get that here. It's really good. It's 5.5. .5. It's a malt liquor here. Now, in England, they get a 4.7% version. I don't think I want that. When I was on the ship from the Spanish mainland, you know, Europe to Africa, Spanish uh, territory in Africa, the autonomous city of uh, they had Estrella Galicia, and I drank it on the on because I knew it was gonna be like 45 minute ride. So um, I had my camera. I don't like to do those on site videos though, really, because it makes a lot of noise in the background, you know. And what are you gonna to do? Tell the whole ship, y'all shut up. I'm doing a video. <laughs> Herbie on wheel says hi, hello to you. All right, so let's go with this. Um, I got them mixed up pretty well. One is a little lighter, but I just won't glance down at them. So, yeah, then when I went to Spanish Africa, the Tauta, Tauta, they have a lot of nice grocery stores there. They're, they're just like here, the same, except they have a lot more fresh fish and stuff that they don't usually have around here. Well, Winn-Dixie has a seafood section that's pretty fresh, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Like, they, they're right on the coast, so there's constant... That was a mistake. I should have tried to find where their fishing harbor was, where all the ships come in, watch them clean the fish, you know, but I just forgot about it. But um, so yeah, there's fresh fish everywhere. Might have been on, might have been caught an hour before it's in the store. Gibraltar, Alge, uh, La Lania de Concepcion, Algeciras, Tauta, Tauta. They all have a harp, you know, they all have a marina with expensive private boats. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of fishing going on right next to the sea. So kind of like New Orleans, right next to the water. <laughs> yeah, brown, uh, rye bread, rye bread, rye bread in the nose. <laughs> and rye bread in the nose. So aroma, tie, appearance, tie. Can I tell them apart? I don't know. Must be 9.30 there. Uh, yeah, 9.46. I'll check Total Wine and more and see what they're selling it for right now. I have to go get a new passport photo because my passport's going to expire in a couple of months. And if I ever want to go somewhere, you know, it'd be nice to have a new one, a current one. Jim Beam Rye. What in the world is this? Rye, they might not carry it anymore. Rye whiskey, let's go there. Hmm. <sighs> Rebel, Rebel Yell, Straight Rod. I never had that one. That's $15.99. It's a good price. Woodford Reserve. Uh, why are they putting Old Charter on this list? That's not a rye. Old Granddad's not a rye. Old Overhaul, $18.99. Oh, I paid a dollar too much. I could have saved a dollar at Total Wine. Okay, so you can get it for $18.99. Still going up $3. Uh, Sazerac, $19.99. That's not even that good of a deal. You can get it for $18.99. Some stores around here. Okay, they don't carry Jack. Uh, 
Elite Ride for twenty two ninety nine. Okay, so th- there you go. They don't carry J- Jack Daniels Rye anymore. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim Beam Rye. Probably was a bad seller. Couldn't tell you, but they don't have it on their website. And I know how to read a website. All right, cheers. Oh, good. The sun came out all the way. All the clouds are gone. Yeah, that's good. Spicy, rye bread, rye bread crust, medium body, full body. Good, good punchy finish. Stays around. I don't know which which one is which. Random history question. If you could go back in time in an invisible bubble and watch any historical event, what would it be? Uh, I guess the life of Jesus Christ would be the most important event. Yeah. And you're saying, I would stick by Jesus. I wouldn't turn on him. That's what St. Peter said, too. (laughs) Uh, It's easy to say things. It's not so easy to do them, is it? Cheers. I bet Jim Beam takes the win. Takes the win. I'm not too confident. Clancy says, my favorite whiskey is a blended Irish whiskey called Tullamore D.E.W., Daniel E. Williams. I have a bottle. I got a great deal at Walmart. $13. Don't know why they had it for that price, but they did. And I took advantage of it. All right. This one is fuller body, I think. This one... is weaker. Not by much, but a little bit. So that must be the 86 proof, meaning old overhaul. This must be the 90 proof, meaning Jim B. Now, they're made at the same distillery from the same company, by the same company. We'll see where this is made. Beam, Kentucky, Clermont, Kentucky, and Frankfort, Kentucky. There are three big distilleries. The only one they give a tour at is Claremont. They don't really even give a tour. They give a, an experience. Um, I don't need to go have a whiskey experience. I want to tour the facility, you know. I want to see how it works, honestly. Um, I don't see any towns there. Oh, here we go. Frankfurt and Claremont, but not Bean. But two of the same distilleries. So are they using similar ingredients? Common sense. Yeah, rye. What about the other? uh, Because they're not 100% rye. What about the other ingredients? We don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not the same. It's obviously not the same, but similar. I prefer this one, and I think it's the Jim Beam. It's got a little bit more character. Got it. Love that mintiness. Oh, man. That's the one heck of a price for that one at our local store. On the rare occasions, I get a bottle of that. It cost me at least $40. When I bought it for $13, it was half price. It was normally $26. I know the price has gone up because of the JB inflation, but well, I was glad to get it for $13, though. But I'm not bragging or trying to make people feel bad. It's just what I paid. It's what, what it was. Okay, so... Final assessment. Is old, old overhaul worth it? Yeah, it's clearly worth it. I love that minty flavor, but if I could get the Jim Beam for the same price, and like I said, I got it for $1.50 less um, last year. It was actually last year, 2022. Um I would buy it, but I don't, I don't ever, I, I'm telling you, I don't see this product around. I, they had it at Total Wine. I had to go all the way to Baton Rouge. You know, why did I have to go to Baton Rouge? Because it was nowhere in this town and I couldn't find it anywhere else in New Orleans. I do, I'm just telling I don't see it. Uh, what about Jack Daniels, right? I do see that one. They have it at Walmart right there. The Tennessee Rye from Jack Daniels, so... I mean, I'm not going to go on some expedition to find Jim Beam Rye. Mm-hmm. 
But as it turns out, I did not have to go on the expedition because I, I was passing by the exit. I knew I was going to pass by that Louisiana Highway. Segan, Seag what's the name of that street? Segan Lane, but it's a state highway. Segan Lane. And I had to pass, I had to go past it to get home. So I said, well, how long is it going to take to get off the road and go to Total Wine and More? As it turns out, it didn't take long at all. And then I went and got some Mexican food. Uh, at some restaurant I had never been to, which is very good. So, um, but now they no longer sell it. <laughs> All right. Now, is rye whiskey real popular in America? Uh, no, not particularly. I bet you bourbon now sells at 100 to 1. But it's got a, uh, you know, it's got this little niche. Like when I went to Dorgnax, the lady said, oh, all my rye whiskey. She might have been one of the doorknack people because it's a family place. She says, all on this shelf here, this end cap. I said, oh, okay. There all of it was. More than I could ever buy uh, in my life. But um, but how many people go by that end cap every day and buy a rye whiskey? It's a, you know, a few people might buy it. But you know where most people are when they go to Dorgnack's liquor section? They're in the bourbon section. They're in the bourbon section or the scotch section. They're not in the brandy. They're not looking at brandy and they're not looking at rye. I saw some guy put honey in his whiskey the other day. Would you recommend trying that? I mean, you could try it. I'm sure it'd be fine. I wouldn't do it, but I don't see anything wrong with it. It's not like it's unethical. It's a little peculiar. But what am I going to say? I mean, I'm over here pouring coffee over eggnog for morning, in the morning time. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could say too much. All right. Well, so the winner, Jim Beam Rye, as I assumed it would be. And then we'll come back with, you know, the big boy. And you know what the big boy is, the Jack Daniels Tennessee Rye. But I don't think it's really selling that well, I'll tell you the truth. I think they're about to phase it out. I get this feeling they're about to kill it, but I don't know that. But I never see any videos for Jack Daniels Rye. I never see anybody buying Jack Daniels Rye. And I never hear anybody talking about Jack Daniels Tennessee Rye. It's a shame because it's a really good product. But can't make people buy it, right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I know. But I eat chicken all last week. I can't stand looking at chicken for about a week all right that's it i gotta go well y'all take care so this was a successful challenge and uh what's gonna happen with jack daniels tennessee rye uh i don't know we're gonna find out i guess